Okay. 151, All-American Hymn Book, Dwelling in Beulah Land, Beulah Land, the land of marriage. And that's uh, talking about uh, heavenly places, amen. <clears throat> Great things, and while we're here, we can just stride on through Beulah Land. The Lord's gonna take us all the way home to glory. What a wonderful thing he has planned for us. The land of marriage, 151. <clears throat>
blood-bought Christian ought to be dwelling in Beulah land as we go through this old pilgrimage here on the earth. Uh, just remember who your Savior is and who the God is that has saved you by His grace. Amen. <clears throat> Number 153. Let me just mention uh, a few things in passing. We will be having a guest speaker in the middle of August. Uh, <clears throat> and my wife and I plan a trip to go to Iowa. So the... Uh, I called Scott Sanny, talked to him this week. He says, well, I'm all booked up for the year, except for one Sunday. <laughs> yep, the 21st of August. So he says, be glad to come over. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so he'll be here. And uh, that's wonderful uh, to know that those things are taken care of. And the Lord has it in his time. And, and it wasn't really a surprise to hear that, oh, I only have one opening the rest of the this summer and fall. <laughs> yeah, it's the one that I wanted that the Lord had planned for me. So <clears throat> we'll take care of that. Also today we had, um, uh, is Rob's th 79th birthday. We hope to go down there. They've said we can come down. Uh, the food has to be inspected and prepared that we bring in by the kitchen help. So <laughs> I don't know what that means, but we'll find that out. And uh, <clears throat> And we have to have COVID tests before we can go in and fill out all the paperwork. Nothing's changed. We're still in New York. Still have the same emergency pandemic plan that uh, has been going on for since 2020. So <clears throat> we'll see what we can do. Hope to see Rob and Linda today. It's been a long time since we've been able to go in and see them. So uh, <clears throat> the birthdays, it's interesting. You know, I'm glad each one of you that's here today had a birthday. If you didn't have a birthday, you wouldn't be here, right? You have to have a birthday. So a birthday anniversary is a whole other thing. I'm glad you keep having birthday anniversaries too because uh, that means that you're, the Lord's keeping you around for another year, okay? Or every time you hit that mark. Now, birthdays aren't all that important. I've never been one to celebrate birthdays per se or to push birthdays because uh, the Bible doesn't. The Bible doesn't give, even give us a date for the Lord Jesus Christ's birthday or John the Baptist. Now we know that Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, was born in late September, early October in that time frame, but we don't have a date. And I'm so thankful that God didn't give us a date and say, here's, celebrate this birthday. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that ruin the whole thing? I think it just put a damper on everything. It'd become a big, a big uh, religious thing, you know, that you have to do. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, how many birthdays are reported in the Bible? Anybody know? Two, anybody know what one of them was? Hold it. Oh, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about where it actually calls it a birthday, where somebody had a birthday. Okay, yeah, everybody that's in the Bible had a birth, a day of birth, we know that. <laughs> so it, it's uh, uh, spectacular ones. I thought of Moses first thing when I was thinking about that. Uh, <clears throat> but of the, who's mentioned in relationship to a birthday that specifically says, Huh? Who? A king, a pharaoh, right? With Joseph, remember? Uh, interpretation of the dream, he had a birthday party and he hung the baker, remember? Uh, so uh, Joseph's translation of the dreams came true and the butler was restored. And uh, so the other one is Herod when he had to take the head of John the Baptist at his promise, his vow to his, uh, whatever she was, Herodias's daughter. Uh, <clears throat> but that was, so you have two, two birthdays that are specifically mentioned and they're not a good time <laughs> unless you want to lose your head or be hung. So uh, the Bible doesn't really support celebrating birthdays is what I'm saying, okay? If you want to do that, that's fine. God leaves that up to the individuals. You can do what you want with those things. Those are things that are not, uh, not included in the scripture as being right or wrong. Okay, so if you do it to the Lord, do it to the Lord. If you don't do it, don't do it to the Lord. So that's the way it is. Anyway, any other comments on birthdays in the Bible? <laughs> yes? I just have to wear my hat today. Born 
much died twice. Yes, thank you. That's, thank you. I wanted to mention that. Uh, now I hope that each one's had the second birthday. Uh, that's the important one, to know that you've had, uh, been born again, the Bible calls it, okay? And so that's, uh, you have to have it. Otherwise you're gonna have death coming twice. So, okay, the important birthday is the second birth, being born again. Um, okay, let's go on with 153 and the All-American. I know who holds tomorrow. And I don't know who will be here today. I don't know where people are, who's coming and going, traveling and different things. So we'll just uh, uh, enjoy the Lord together with whoever it is. Um, <clears throat> 
of the important things in life, the most important thing in life, <laughs> to know you have eternal life, you've been born again. <clears throat> How wonderful. Okay, we uh, want to go and look at uh, Saul as he's uh, anointed to become king, Saul, in uh, 1 Samuel 9. We'll be looking at that. He was a humble giant when he started, <laughs> a humble giant. And we'll look at that uh, in just a bit. I want to um, mention from uh, uh, Viola, Jacob Viola Hughes in, uh, uh, in Moldova. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings from Moldova on a beautiful, warm, breezy summer day. Thank you for taking the time to read our latest news and for praying with us for the requests we mentioned. We pray that your summer is going well and you are encouraged in your walk with the Lord. Our donation bags of food staples and basic toiletries to Ukrainians has paused for now. Shortly after our last prayer letter, we distributed more bags and explained to the social worker how we would like to give our donations in the future. We wanted to continue to give bags to newly arrived refugees through uh, her office but to set up something different that would allow us more interaction with those who have been in the city for a while. We purchased more supplies, but then problems arose. The social worker promised to give us a list of Ukrainians staying in Soroka. She never did. Uh, then she stopped replying to calls and messages. Eventually, we were able to donate the food already purchased to a hotel restaurant that was preparing meals for those staying at a campground. Due to other summer activities, we have not looked at other avenues to aid those displaced by the war. We are hoping that uh, <clears throat> doors will open up in the next few weeks. We've been able to stay in touch with one Ukrainian family that we met through giving as they are staying in a home in our village. We are supposed to go visit them again soon. Would you pray that the Lord would show us how we can best minister to them? The last week of June is held, we held a VBS at the children's home in Kasadi, uh, where we minister weekly. Since we were, are teaching through a curriculum that points kids to the theme of redemption in the Bible, we continued with that curriculum for the week. We are pleased to have over 20 kids each day and even more pleased that a number of kids memorize the daily verse. Through the summer, including the VBS week, we are awarding kids points for attendance, verse memory, and behavior. Later, they will be able to spend those points on prizes in our store. A couple of weeks ago, we heard the heartbreaking news of a wife who, returning from working abroad, told her husband she didn't want anything more to do with him. He has been caring for their four children, ages 5 to 11, for the past three, over three years while she's been working. Please pray for our brother K, they, they use in, just initials, uh, K, as he deals with this awful situation. Would you also pray for God's chastening on C, his wife? So K and C, that she would repent and turn back to God and to her family. If you'd pray for us, we need God's wisdom to see how to care for the family. Last week we held a VBS in Bobosi, the village where we have Sunday afternoon services. There were several blessings from the week. First, four ladies that attend Sunday services came to help out. They lightened our load and I think they enjoyed serving the kids too. Second. Attendance exceeded my expectations. We had at least 20 kids each of the five days. Third, a majority of these unchurched kids and their memory verse came uh, when they came, said their memory verse when they came the next day. Uh, fourth, the weather was very pleasant and the kids were mostly cooperative. Fifth, we have since heard very positive reports from adults in the village. We ourselves enjoyed the week and are eager to know how God may expand this in the future. The war in Ukraine continues to indirectly affect those to whom we minister. We already mentioned uh, the Ukrainian family in the 
village that cannot yet go home. The brother of a man who comes to services in Soroka lives in a region where the Russians already occupy. The sister of a friend of Viola's has had her three shoe stores destroyed totally by rockets. Another friend's uh, father and brother-in-law live in a dis city a distance from the combat, but was hit by rockets last week. After claiming they were after the Donbass, the Hoska regions, Russia has now openly named two other regions that are objectives, plus a number of other unnamed territories. While the U.S. has stopped, uh, excuse me, while the U.S. has supported Ukraine with sophisticated weapons, Russia is now using Ukraine's possession of those weapons as justification for further fighting. They are claiming as a threat to their country as long as Ukraine has these weapons. As Moldova is seeking to join NATO and unite with Europe, the breakaway region of uh, Tranistra openly stated this week that it wants a free union with Russia. While we are still many miles from the combat and rocket attacks, it seems the possibility of the conflict more directly touching Moldova is growing. To be clear, we don't discern any imminent danger, but tension is slowly growing as opposed to diminishing in Moldova. So in his service, Jacob Marley Hughes, remember K and C uh, and the kids, um, Ukraine fighting, the Lord's direction as they minister to individuals, and they praise the Lord for the uh, good VBSs that they've had and good reports they've received about the VBS since. So that's uh, from the Hughes. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and get into the Bible here for a, we'll have more next hour, I guess. Another <clears throat> First Samuel nine. First Samuel nine. <clears throat> Father, again we thank thee for the this day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for each one here, for those that are on the road traveling or unable to come for any reason, Lord, you know and you take care of them and meet with them, Lord. And uh, we thank you for this letter from the Hughes and Moldova, Lord, and their faithfulness to you and serving you there and uh, the wonderful time they've had with the uh, uh, VBS, reaching out to the young people there in the communities. And Lord, for the older folks that have joined in to help, Lord, we pray for the one family with the uh, children there, the father uh, with uh, K and C there, Lord, that you would work that out and use uh, the Hughes there too. Uh, help in that situation and Lord again we have the wars going on and the rumors of wars and all these things Lord we know that those things must come to pass and Father we thank you that you are in control and you are watching every move that's made and folks will be held accountable Lord by you Father we uh, trust you fully we give you the, uh, the time for vengeance and Lord just help us to be followers and faithful to what you call us to do, Lord, each day, and whatever the situation, Lord, that you would guide and direct in our lives, that we might be uh, give you glory for your name's sake. Uh, again, Father, we look forward to the future. We're thankful that we can be saved, Lord, and we know that uh, heaven is our home, Lord, that we'll be with you eternally. How wonderful it is to be reconciled back to you, Father, uh, from our sinful state, Lord, by the blood of Jesus Christ and the finished work of Calvary. <clears throat> the resurrection, Lord, what a day uh, to live in, Lord. And now, Father, help us to know your will and your way as we see things go. And Father, help us now learn from uh, these, uh, from 1 Samuel as we look at the first king that you gave to Israel, Father. Now, uh, bless, open our hearts and minds to the things, the spiritual things that you have for us, we pray. First Samuel, <clears throat> chapter 9, Saul, King Saul, 
Israel asked for king. The Lord said they've rejected him, and, and so they want a king instead of God to reign over them. <clears throat> Samuel uh, talked to the Lord, and the Lord told him, go ahead and give them their request. Tell them, though, what's going to happen, what's going to be like under a king. And so he did. <clears throat> now in chapter 9, he's making um, the way for the king. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zerar, the son of Bekorath, the uh, son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Uh, so here's a great man in the tribe of Benjamin. Now Benjamin's known as the the warrior tribe that uh, they had these the, the sling, slingers there that could uh, uh, hit a target at a hair's breadth for uh, with their slings. Uh, very good and and interestingly, maybe this next week or so in our Thursday night class, you're going to see a live uh, demonstration of the sling in Israel. And uh, many people uh, still own slings there and use slings for defense and things. Uh, but they, they show the comparison, the actual speed of the rocks, uh, the, imp the force. And so it's, uh, it's interesting to see that. And that'll be coming up, we may get that far this week uh, in our studies there. Uh, but the, the um, Benjamites, they were known for their men of war and for being able to use a slingshot extremely accurately. Uh, <clears throat> he had a son, okay, this man, this, this very powerful, mighty man, uh, had a son, verse two, whose name was Saul, a choice young man, a goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Uh, so we're going to see that a couple times mentioned. So he's a big man. He's really a giant of a man. Uh, because he was from shoulders upward. The average man is about, uh, you know, five or six cubits tall. Uh, I'm figuring a foot and a half for the normal cubit. Uh, so the average person's around that. He was at least seven cubits tall. Probably, uh, you know, between seven and eight cubits tall. Uh, so if... If you're standing in a crowd and this much of you is showing above the rest, you're a pretty big guy, <laughs> pretty tall guy. And so uh, he was head and shoulders above uh, the rest of the people. And he was a goodly man. He was raised right. He was a goodly man. Uh, it's interesting, we're not going into the negative aspect of Saul's because we'll get to that eventually anyway, the way uh, how so many leaders get puffed up with pride and turn from the Lord and do it their own way in the end of their reign. Uh, I, now King Saul was, wasn't the only one. I mean, you can go on, how about King Solomon and what he did with all the concubines and wives and, and how they turned his heart from the Lord uh, in the end of his reign. How did he start out? He started out right uh, praying to the Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm helpless. I don't know what to do, Lord. You're going to have to take care of it. You're going to have to do it. And the Lord says, I'll do it. He said, because you're a humble heart, he said, I'll, I'll do it for you. And the same thing with Saul. Uh, here, we'll see that Saul uh, was really kind of scared to go out, <laughs> kind of scared to step, step forth and do what uh, he was asked to do. So he was uh, from his shoulders and upward is higher than any of the people. That's a pretty distinctive thing, any, than any of the people. So maybe he was eight, eight, eight cubits high. Maybe, you know, that's, that's getting into the range of Goliath, if you think about that. Verse 3 now of 1 Samuel 9, the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise and go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalashah, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of uh, Shalom, and there they were not. So he's not finding them. 
He's going all over the place. He passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found him not. Now, God orchestrated all this, and the lost asses so that he would get Saul where he wants him. Okay? Verse 5, when they were come to the land of Zuth, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. Uh, that shows the relationship he had with his father. He knew that if they didn't get back there soon, their dad was going to be worried about them. Their dad was going to be concerned about where they were and forget about the animals. <laughs> we don't need the animals, but I want my son. You can see that relationship uh, through here as the, uh, <clears throat> from the very beginning. So he tells his servant, we need to return. We need to go back because uh, dad's going to be worried about us. He's going to be getting really concerned. Verse 6, he said unto him, Behold now, there is a, in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he hath saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither. Peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. <laughs> good advice, good choice. Go to the man of God and find out what God says about what you should do. Then said Saul, verse 7, to his servant, but behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Uh, interesting little clause in there that explains the difference between the seer and the prophet and how the name had changed. Verse 10, Then said Saul to his servant, Well, well said, Come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, Is the seer here? The, the, the uh, seer, seer, he's uh, one that can see the future. He's one that sees vision. That's generally associated with the seers of old. They were prophets that could see the future. God would give them something that's going to happen. Verse 12, they answered them and said, He is, behold, he is before you. Make haste now, for he came today to the city, for there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as ye be come into the city, ye shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore get you up, for about this time ye shall find him. Uh, so here's the, the local.